Hi again, everybody. Dr. Lee Coleman. And we are right in the middle of some sessions taking a look at our current system of investigation of whether or not a child's been sexually abused, how the child protection agencies and police departments and courts are handling it, something that for 30 years I have been deeply involved in and deeply disturbed by from the very beginning. And so by now you should know quite a bit about that. And I want to keep going with a little more about this McMartin case because the people who were involved in doing such unprofessional things were the teachers, the first generation, who were in the process of training thousands of people across the country who then, in turn, eventually became the trainers of the next generation. And that's how cultures evolve. Things develop, for better or for worse, over time. They become more and more deeply entrenched. Vocabularies developed, agencies are developed, thinking is influenced. More and more things are taken for granted. Phrases become automatic. The, the impetus for practices. So I want to tell you a little more about some of the abuse that happened as a spin-offs of this McMartin case. You know, when the, the 400 or so children who were interviewed by Key McFarlane and two totally uh, brand new kind of social workers, they were not trained to be interviews in any way except Key McFarlane was training them to do what she was doing. Uh, those interviews were done for the purposes of supposedly getting statements about crimes that were being alleged at the McMartin School. So they were being recorded, and then the police department in Manhattan Beach was literally taking the end product of what the children said as this child's statement. So that when I looked at the police reports that the police officer, uh, Jane Hogue was her name, was writing down, in her reports it was not mentioned, nothing was said about the process by which the children were led to say what they said. And you've now heard some examples so you know how it was being done, how bogus it was. It, it was not mentioned not only that that process was being done to, with the child, but not even, the, not even the fact that the, the statements came out of that interview. So it looked, if you read the police report, as though the police had received these statements from the child. Well, once those interviews were done, the parents were told, your child is one of the ones who's been victimized because they told us. We've taped it, and I'm sad to tell you that not one set of parents ever demanded to see the entire interview. Some parents were shown a portion of the interview, but only by fast-forwarding to the part where the child ended up going along with what the interviewers were suggesting. But not once did the parents ever watch the entire interview where they had at least a chance of seeing how their child had been victimized. And the next thing that they did is they recommended to the parents that they get the children in therapy so that they could work with a therapist, the child could work with a therapist, to undo the harm of the trauma from the abuse they had received at the McMartin Preschool. And this, the therapists that they were sending them to were not just somebody they found in the phone book. It were particular therapists who had demonstrated that they were on board the same kind of thinking as the people doing what they were doing at the Children's Institute International, primarily Key McFarland. So those therapists accepted the children into therapy and inevitably, part of the therapy is going to involve 
talking about the fact of what was done to them, helping them get over the effects of what these adults were assuming happened. And of course, by this time, how can we expect the parents not to assume the same thing? So now you have these children not only manipulated into saying something, but now the parents manipulated many of them into believing the same things, and then sent to therapists who will further reinforce those same fears and beliefs about what happened. It's, uh, in my opinion, clearly child abuse. And that is the precursor to something which has developed and is very widespread now. Children who are in these investigations, now I'm not talking about the, chem the uh, Ch uh, McMartin case, just in general, will often be sent to therapists, handpicked because they have gotten known to the law enforcement community as therapists who agree that when the child is brought to them, they will accept the child as a molested child. They have no uh, opportunity to study the records of the investigation. That would be very unusual for that to happen. So the child is accepted as a child who's been molested, and then the therapy will be based on that, and the child will typically be asked to talk to some degree about what was done to them, the person who did it, if they are a family member, which they may not be in some cases, an otherwise important person in the child's life can be now more or less clearly in the child's mind, from, from then on they will be somebody who did those bad things to me. That person may end up going to prison. They may not, but they will never be the same in terms of the relationship, what people other people in the family think. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the harm done to a child who has been caught up in an, in an uh, investigation which is unprofessionally done, done from a biased point of view, the harm doesn't just stop with the direct impact of these unprofessional kind of questioning which we s looked at last time. The harm can go on for years and the rest of the life the child can be uh, treated as a victim, can be overprotected, can be over-sexualized by all the questions about what supposedly happened or what could have happened and so forth. The harm goes on in many, many ways. In a coming session, I'm going to talk about a whole other form of abuse to adults in the same way, but I'm talking about so-called recovered memory. Uh, with, with adults. So in many, many jurisdictions, I'd say probably almost everywhere, there's laws that have been passed as part of this same movement, what's called victims of crime funding, so that therapists will be paid with public monies to receive the therapy for the abuse that they suffered. Now, if a a child or an adult has been a legitimate victim of a rape, sexual abuse. I in no way would speak out against public monies being made available. Our criminal justice system exists because we say the insult to our culture, to our society of crime is general. That is, if you rob a bank and you're put on trial, it's the people versus Jim Smith, Joe Jones, or whoever. We consider it a crime against the community, and that's why prosecutors are officials of the government. It's not Joe Smith versus Bill Jones, like in a civil lawsuit. So the idea of public money being avail made available to legitimate victims, I wouldn't quarrel with that. But if you don't have a system where you really know who's the legitimate victim and who isn't, 
And it's pretty easy to see that you're going to harm those children who are treated as though they've been abused. And even the families are, you know, encouraged to get into therapy, which will make the harm even greater, then I think we have a serious problem. Finally, just in terms of the therapeutic uh, uh, aspect and the same, the same issues, let me tell you another thing that was done at UCLA and, uh, in connection with this McMartin case. And this is to illustrate that this is a subject which is much bigger than just the cases. It, it has to do with uh, academia and how easily they can get pulled into things which may appear to be beyond reproach, above reproach, I guess, the expression. Uh, so use your judgment on all these topics. The University of California at Los Angeles conducted research with federal government money to determine how much harm was done to the children by the abuse that took place at the McMartin School. Now, there wasn't any abuse at the McMartin School. The, all the evidence makes it very, very clear the case was created by unprofessional, hasty uh, things being done by social workers, doctors, and interviewers, and police. They created the whole thing and did a tremendous amount of harm. Then UCLA gets on the bandwagon and gets research from the federal government to decide how much harm was done to them. And they would do that by questionnaires of the parents about how the child was doing at such and such a time, such and such a time, with no concern about the evidence which showed that there was no reason to believe that anything was done. So that any responsible researcher confronted with the idea of doing that kind of research should have said, any kind of reasonable study of this case makes it clear that we cannot know, in the case of any child, whether they were abused or not. So how can you do research where the base population that you're going to study you don't know whether they're an abused or non-abused population. They should have simply refused the money and not done it. But Dr. Jill Waterman, who was and wrote books with Key McFarland, they were colleagues. That's another thing, conflict of interest. All that was ignored. And you can, you can buy a book co-authored by Jill Waterman and Key McFarland on the effects of sexual abuse on children. So what I'm saying is keep your thinking caps on, use your judgment, and don't be intimidated by credentials. Don't be academic credentials or any others. That's why I'm trying as hard as I can that I encourage you not to rely on my credentials. Now, I'm not attached to any universities or, or government funding. So you might say, well, he doesn't have credentials like some of these other people. Well. Either way, I don't want you to understudy what, or under uh, evaluate or just dismiss what I'm saying. And I don't want you to believe it because I'm saying it. I want you to take this information and really think for yourself. I don't have any question about what I'm saying because 30 years is a long time to be immersed in these kind of cases. And uh, I desperately hope that we can do something about it. Thank you very much for coming. Don't forget to tell your friends, and I'll see you next time.